guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Out of This World by Devere. It plays three to five players, 60 minutes, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you are a bunch of kids trying to prevent the end of the world. It is a campaign game of sorts where there's five different scenarios you can go through, from one being the easiest to five being the most challenging. And they also have a hit the block, which will allow you to just play the game uh, by itself on its own individual way. Uh, in the game, you're basically going to be playing as one of the kids. You'll choose either the male or female side to your card. You're going to be gathering specific items based on the campaign and a set of cards. And then you're going to set up stacks of cards. And these stacks of cards are going to flip over and you'll be selecting them and bringing them into your pool, which then you'll be able to use an action. And the action could vary between giving somebody else a card to equipping a card yourself or defeating a foe and front of you. Your objective is to collect enough items to prevent the end of the world from happening, and in order to do that you'll have to have sets of items of the same color or the same number, and as you collect them, increasing your numbers are provided to you by the equipped cards that you have, whether it be 30 or 25, based on the number of players that you have, or based on the scenario, that will make you finish or complete your task. But you need to make sure everybody else is able to do so as well to win the game. The way you lose, time runs out, and time runs out by there being too many enemies on board in front of players at the end of the round. Another thing to note too in this game is, has a unique twist to communication. Only one player can communicate in this game, and that is the person who has the handy dandy, walkie-talkie. This little walkie-talkie will allow you to speak and to give advice to certain players, but because technically only you and the person you're talking to are going to be communicating, nobody else can communicate with you. Only that person who is specifically holding this can talk to people, thusly allowing this game to have a less of a, because it's a co-op, less of the ability for somebody to alpha game, which is really unique, and we'll talk about it down below when I show you how to play the game, what the setup is kind of like, what the actions are, how to win, and then my review. Welcome to Out of This World, set up for up to five players. These are the character cards, and everybody will get one, and they can choose the front or the back side. There's both a male and a female for each side, so there's a lot of variety in characters. You're going to get a time card, place all the time markers indicated on the little circles there. There should be eight of them, and choose, of course, your campaign. There's five, or you can do a hit the block, which is basically something that you can just set up and play the game without doing the campaign. I'll uh, just set up Birthday Bash for now, though. Uh, you're going to have this walkie-talkie, set it aside or give it to a specific player, they're going to be the first player of the game. And then you're going to have the deck of cards. And based on the birthday bash or whatever campaign scenario you choose, we'll determine what goes in this deck. And for this specific one, it will say to take these specific cards that have this little symbol on the bottom, this little uh, plus symbol, and you're going to put it into the deck. You're also going to take a certain amount of enemies, ones without any symbols on them. There should be 11 of them, of them and place them into the deck. And then, of course, you'll have unique or elite enemies. You'll set these aside because it'll tell you once this deck runs out, you'll put one of these guys in and an additional enthralled enemy. Uh, there's also going going to be unique items and monsters in the game, and that will be based on the campaign scenario. So for instance, that is going to be a diamond, and as you can see, this is not a diamond, so you're not going to add this to this specific campaign. You'll set aside all the cards that you're not going to be utilizing and put them out of the game, because you will not use them for this game, but you may use them for another one. And then you'll take the cards that you did select, and, and uh, as well as all the rest of the items, and then you're going to give the deck a nice shuffle. Make sure you shuffle it as multiple times as possible, just so that it uh, gives it a nice random feel to it. And then after that, you're going to deal out two cards to every single player. If when you're dealing out cards to every single player, you get a monster card, you're going to go ahead and continue to draw up. I place the monster on the side there and draw up until you get two. So in this case here, she's got these guys. This is an item that goes to her hand. This is a foe and it will go here. So she will continue to draw. And then she's got her two and the next player as well. One and a foe, and another foe, wow, and another foe, I didn't shuffle very well, and two, and then two, two, and two. And then after that, that is the setup for the game. You're going to, after that, shuffle this, make sure you get this deck nice and shuffled. You're gonna go ahead and place out five stacks of four cards. One, two, a three, and four, and the final one being five, 
put them face down to begin with, set the deck aside, move the rest of the cards out of the way, and then you're going to go ahead and flip these all over, making sure you don't reveal any cards underneath them, so you can only see the top card, and then select the starting player. And the starting player will get to take uh, two, do, do two things. First, select any one of these cards from any of these piles, and then take an action. So this player over here might select this card here, and then they can perform an action. And their actions are going to be based on the cards in their hand or their ability here. Uh, the first action being you can simply pass. You can play two items of the same color, and uh, then you're going to discard the higher valued one and give that to somebody else. So somebody might want an orange or a three. You're always going to get rid of the highest uh, valued card. Another thing that you can do is if you have the same color or the same number, if you have three of them in a set, you can equip. So in this case here, I have a five, a six, and a three. I could then go ahead and play this as a set, discard these guys here, and then this character here can actually equip this item. Uh, equipped item goes to the end of the end scoring, and in this specific adventure, you're going to need either 30, 25, or 21 points in this area here in order for you to be completed, and every single player will need to do that before time runs out. Uh, the other thing that you can do is defeat a monster. So for instance, if I didn't want to get rid of these guys here, and let's say instead of this five, I actually had this eight over here, I could defeat this sewer cover. It requires two cards that are six or higher, and I have a six and an eight here. I can discard these guys and thusly discard this. Some monsters are going to have abilities that might happen when they come up or throughout the game. You'll have to take care of these guys as you see fit. And that's pretty much the idea. Afterwards, you're going to go ahead and pass, and the next player can go ahead and take their turn. They're going to draw one of these cards, then they're going to perform an action, whether it be to defeat one of these monsters, or whether it be to uh, play two cards, for instance, and discard the higher valued one and give it to somebody else. Uh, and then finally after that, they'll go ahead and pass. And this deck is, or these decks will eventually get worn out. And as you take these cards and take your actions, Eventually what's going to happen most likely is there's, you're going to find a monster in these stacks. These guys do not ha apparently have a stack, but there are monsters in the deck and when you deal them out eventually, if this guy for instance was under here, after these cards all get revealed, uh, when this guy pops out, mon this monster is going to go to the next player. And when a monster pops out, you will just get to keep the monster and pass, basically. And you'll have to deal with them. For every monster that you do not deal with that is on the board after all of these cards have been dealt out, you're going to lose a time symbol. So in this case here, if there's three of them, you're going to end up losing three times. And that is going to significantly reduce the chances of you winning. So defeating these monsters is very important. And if the times run out, you are done. However, if you can complete the victory condition on the card here based on whatever it asks you to do, in this case it says everybody needs to have 21 victory points in their equipped items area, then you're going to win. Otherwise, the other thing you need to know about is every character has an ability, and it tells you when you play set to equip an item, you may let another player equip it instead. So instead of her spending three cards, discarding the highest two and putting it here, you can give it to somebody else, which is kind of a way in which you can cooperate. And of course, the last thing being that you actually will pass this on after the round is over. After these guys are all dealt out, you're going to trigger the end phase of the game. Uh, you're going to check for victory, depending on three, four, or five players. You'll reduce the time tokens, you'll discard down to your hand size of, size of five, you'll pass this marker over here, and then you'll start the next round by dealing out four stack, five stacks of four cards, flipping them over. This player is then going to once again draw one, draw one, draw one, taking those actions until either this gets completed or you guys are able to equip enough items on your characters to win the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Let's talk about it. Before we get into my review of the game Out of This World, a couple of things. First of all is whenever there's a monster on top of one of the stacks, after somebody pulls a card and takes an action, there might be a monster on the stack. If that's going to be the case, then the next player will have to take that monster, put it in that monster pool of theirs, and then they can take an action, but they're not going to be able to draw a card on their turn. The card they drew was the monster. It's not great. It's not the thing you want to do, but it's going to happen. When the deck runs out, which it will eventually, you're going to reshuffle the deck 
and then based on the scenario, it will tell you what you do. Usually it'll just say to reshuffle the deck, maybe add a few cards based on the extra cards you've set aside throughout that, the game at the beginning, and it'll make it a little more challenging, I suppose. And then it's going to just have you rinse and repeat the process. And then of course, remember, if you have the walkie talkie, you can speak and tell people what to do, but if you do not, you cannot. So you cannot alpha game this game, except for when you actually have that walkie talkie. No face symbols, none of that stuff. You have to actually play it correctly by allowing only the person who has the walkie talkie to speak. And each player can only speak during each round. And a round is every single one of those cards in those five stacks has to be removed and the deck will then deal out. And then you'll go ahead and start by moving that marker over. This game here is a rather interesting cooperative game. I've never seen a game in which only one person can specifically speak during a specific round, and how they utilize it is very interesting because you need to actually understand the game pretty well in order to uh, explain things to players and what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And of course, uh, they can't speak with you uh, so you have to kind of mandate what they do, but they don't have to listen to you. They might actually do something differently, even if you explain something, or if you're on the other end of the walkie-talkie and you have a better strategy, but you can't explain it to them, then you're going to have this, like, mishmash of discooperation because you think you know it's best, they think they know it's best, and then the person sitting to the right of you is sitting there going, neither of you know what's going on. And that brings a lot of tension, which is actually really good for this cooperative game. It makes you feel like you are on these walkie-talkies and that that person literally cannot hear you because they cannot hear you. The game's very, very simple. You're, you know, five stacks of cards on your turn, you draw a card, and then you choose one of the actions, whether it be your specific main action, or if it's a passive, you can choose to take two cards as long as they're the same number or the same color and pass one to another player, but you're always discarding the better cards. The higher card values are going to go, and you'll do the lowest card value. So if it's three green cards and you have a three, two, and a one, the one is what's going to be kept for you. If it's a five and a five, you can choose either five and you can go ahead and pass it to your opponent, uh, or of course, if you have a five, 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 you can simply equip a five. So the only way you're going to be able to equip an eight is if you have literally three eights. Um, uh, oh, oh, yeah, you have to have three eights that are blue or three eights of different colors, but that's pretty much the only way. Uh, and if you want something like a five or a six, you're going to need to have a six and then a four and then like a two and you can, uh, oh, sorry, a six and then a seven and then an eight. And you have to discard the seven and the eight and you'll get the six. So higher cards have a higher requirement. They are harder to get, but they have a lot of value. There's a lot of cards that give you passive uses. And there's another action you can take on the occasion, which I didn't really talk about down below because it's not as common. It is, it's not uncommon, but like, for instance, you can spend a card. When you equip a card, if you have it next to you on your character board, you're going to get the value of it, which is what you need to win the game. But on your turn as an action, you can turn that card to the side. You'll never be able to unturn it. But when you do, you'll get a special action, like move an item from any player to another player or swap any two items, which is very, very useful. And of course, there's other ones that say at the, at the start of a turn, you can do this specific thing. It gives you a benefit or uh, you're allowed to pass these specific cards in this specific fashion, which is really nice. Some of them give you bonus points that will accumulate throughout the game. So it'll be like, this card is worth one point. But when you have other twos in front of you, it's going to be, won't be worth one more point for each two that you have, which will increase that cumulative victory. You winning by yourself does not help. It doesn't matter in this game. You might have 25 points, but what you need is 21. And what you should have done is pass those points on to other players. You have to work cooperatively to make sure everybody gets the objective and achieves it. At first when I was like, oh, we just need cooperatively, uh, cumulatively 30 points. That was really easy. And then I realized, no, you actually have to have Every person has to have that certain specific number and you need to make sure that they do not get any more higher because that's a waste of cards or any lower because then you're gonna, they're going to need to spend actions to get up there, especially just by one or even two points. Sharing is super key in this game. Monsters are I irritating. They're, they're just like facets of irritation because they pop up and you have to deal with them in some way. You have to get traded cards. Every time you trade or equip, you're basically spending the cards you gain, but you do get a lot of cards every round and you're drawing and drawing. The first round of the game is going to take a while to figure it out. You're going to have to sit there, and obviously with my explanation, it's just a very, very brief overview, and I didn't shuffle the cards very well. As you saw, one person got three monsters, but I think you get the idea of how it functions. Uh, and basically, you're going to understand that, like, I'm going to start with maybe one to three monsters at the beginning of the round, and then you're going to get monsters periodically as each phase goes. Usually it can be anywhere from two to maybe three every time you start a new round as well. A uh, very, very simple style game with, a, of course, a full com com campaign mode. And each of them have actually a story attached to them, a symbol, which will they'll tell you what cards you need in it, and it'll also have a specific... Uh, 
set of rules for that specific campaign. The easier one is obviously the birthday one, which will give you like an enthralled enemy that pops up and an elite enemy that shows up after the entire deck gets shuffled, uh, but they get more and more challenging. And then of course, after you go throughout the full campaign, if you wanted to play five games in a row, you could do that. Or you, there's a, simply another one in the rule book here that's called, I believe it's called like Hit the Block, which I actually didn't play. Uh, Patrol the Block, that's what it's called. And it's a generic adventure. It tells you how to set up the generic adventure in the rules so that you can just simply play a one-shot game. It doesn't have a story. It's just playing it and like trying to deal with some type of baddies. Uh, and that's an option as well. Uh, overall, this game's a lot of fun. This game requires a lot of thinking and it's also going to take you some time to grasp the communication aspect of the game. Kind of like the game The Mind in which you cannot speak in the game. This one here you can, but it's spe specified by certain rules and when you can do so, and that makes a huge difference in this game. If everyone was able to speak, this game would be very easy. But because people are not able to, that is where the challenge arises. Uh, if you like a game that involves carts, a game that plays three to five players and has this kind of like a cooperative element, but with a little bit of like strenuous, like mental fortitude that you're, you're, you're requiring, you need to be able to... You need to be able to sit back and allow people to kind of make mistakes, and then when it's your turn to take the walkie, you can then go ahead and explain all oh, what they did wrong and how they could do it better next time. And players will actually gather that and learn, especially if you played the game before and people, other people haven't. They're not going to understand uh, when it's their specific turn how they're supposed to speak to people. I was playing with a kid that was, I believe, like, 13 or 14 years old, and she played the game just fine, but the problem is the lack of communication and social aspect to the game was the more confusing element. I would even suggest maybe your first time playing the game, if you want to play easy mode, you can just simply have everybody speak. But it is best when people do not speak unless they have the walkie-talkie. That's what really makes the game shine, and so people have to understand that. And of course, playing this game is going to obviously increase your ability to understand how it works, just like the crew and the mind and those type of games. You'll start to see the style of gameplay required in order to understand what best you need to do, what cards are better than others, how you can get specific cards based on what cards you want to discard and gather, and what characters are going to be useful. Some of them will attack uh, other monsters, because you can only attack your own monster in the game, but uh, other characters' so specific abilities will let you attack other people's monsters, or certain cards you have will let you attack other people's monsters as well. Utilizing your abilities is very, very powerful. It gives you kind of an objective and a goal that your character is specifically useful for. If you're the trader, you need to trade. If you are the attacker, you need to attack, because otherwise people are going to have a hard time dealing with the stuff in front of them, because they don't have that potential that you do. If you're interested in taking a look at the game Out of This World, a game that kind of reminds me of a Stranger Themes feel to it, like the kids on bikes type of theme from the 80s, a little bit of, it's very family friendly, it's got a cute, like, cutesy style artwork, it looks good, it looks looks great actually for exactly what you'd think it'd be for. Um, it's not for an extremely younger audience, but it's probably in the teen area family style game. Then go ahead and take a look down below, link in the description for Out of This World by Devere, a game that I had a lot of fun with, but it's only for a very specific audience that is okay with the communication aspect of the game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Out of This World. If you're interested, link down below. Also, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, bell notification button. It helps us out greatly. We do greatly appreciate it. We do tons of reviews and all kinds of great stuff on this channel. And of course, our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. Don't forget to take a look at my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's coming out March 2nd of this year, and it is a puzzle style match three game with Tetris appeal, in which you're going to be rotating board, pulling them down and dropping them onto your player board, utilizing shell patterns, to score points based on objectives, to see your own secret objectives, mermaids, and their own unique mermeeples, all kinds of really cool stuff that I think you'll enjoy for people who are uh, like family games or even high-end gamers and even all the way down to gateway gamers. We kind of made it specifically for the modern gaming market. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, I look forward to fighting with you out of this world next time.